All right, welcome back to the next episode in our series on the solid principles for object-oriented programming. You can apply these principles across software engineering in general to help you conceive better um, programming and better, better code on your journey as a software programmer or an architect. They can be applied to the whole architecture, to modules, to components. Um, and today we are going from the S to the O, and finally to the L, which is the LSP or Liskov substitution principle. So let's get into it. Arcanium. Welcome to a production by Dr. Miles Aaron, CEO and co-founder at Arcanium Ventures. Don't forget to subscribe. 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 Barbara Liskov's coined the term, uh, the Liskov substitution principle in 1988. The LSP tells us that subtypes must be substitutable for their base types. So what does this mean? Um, it's kind of an extension of the open closed principle that we talked about last time um, to this idea of subclasses or subtypes. So in the object oriented world, we'll refer to classes, um, but this can be extended to uh, um, types in other paradigms as well. And when we refer to interfaces um, throughout this video, those interfaces um, could be uh, a class interface in the object-oriented paradigm, or it could even be the interface to a REST API. So you can abstract these ideas and apply them across your programming. When we say that subtypes must be substitutable for their base types, um, what we're really referring to is the conditions that you should place on the inputs and outputs of a subtype. And so your um, subclass is going to have inputs and outputs just like the base class. And what the LSP says is that you shouldn't make the um, input parameters, the rules governing those input parameters, any more strict than on the base class, um, and that your um, output or return value uh, parameters should be at least as strict. So you can make those strict, more strict, but they should be at least as strict as your base class. Um, so we're gonna go through some real examples to, to make this a little easier to understand. One thing that I'll mention before we jump into the examples is that unlike some of the other um, principles here, it's, it's going to be hard for a compiler to catch these errors. So you're going to need to rely on code reviews and on um, uh, unit tests and, and, and different tests to make sure that you actually um, don't violate the LSP in practice. Now, I think there will be ways to automate it depending on the language you're using, but in general, um, that's why it's so important to learn this because it's going to save you um, a headache, but it's also one of those things that's a little harder to automate away as a potential problem. So the classic example that's thrown around all the time is this idea of um, the class of a rectangle versus a square. So if, if you have a user class and the user can um, implement a rectangle or use this rectangle class um, and we say, okay, the rectangle on the rectangle, you can um, set a height and you can set a width. Well, a uh, square is also a rectangle. So let's imagine that um, the square is a subtype of the rectangle. On the square, though, when you set the width, it's going to set both the width and the height to the same value. And if you set the height, it's going to set both the, the width and the height again to the same value. That's not always the case, though, for a rectangle. So um, if the square is a subtype of the rectangle and the user goes to use that rectangle but expects it to behave like a rectangle and now you substitute in a square, um, what's going to happen is that when they call set height and they call the set width um, methods that they, they expect the rectangle to have, it's not going to behave the way they expect because let's say they set width and height and they grab those two values and they calculate area. Um, well, whatever they set last is going to set both sides and it's going to end up uh, with a value that um, you know, doesn't, doesn't do what you expect it to do. It's going to fail your assertions, fail your tests, um, and, and result in a broken application or an application that does not behave the way you expect it. So this is one of the concepts of LSP. Um, 
is that if you substitute a subtype for the base type, the application should, should still behave the same. And in this case, it wouldn't. So let's go over another example to help this kind of set in because to be honest, none of us are um, playing with squares and rectangles generally. We need to move towards something a little more real. Actually, let's do one more silly example just to help this set in. So I saw this example on Stack Overflow. I thought it was um, helpful, so I hope you do too. Um, so let's say you have a class called bird and um, you want to um, create a subclass that extends that class called duck and bird has a method called fly now um, when you know duck is a bird and so you you use this subclass and ducks can also fly so great it works now let's say um, you want to classify an ostrich as a bird as well so you use your bird class and um, you say you know ostrich extends bird great but ostriches can't fly. So now you need some um, logic in your bird class that says, hey, uh, birds can fly, but if they're ostriches, actually they can't. And that is a violation of LSP because now um, your bird class has to be aware of which subtype it's using. And for LSP to work, it shouldn't care which subtype it's using. You should be able to substitute any subtype for that base type. So the ostrich violates the bird. So how could we fix that bird example? Well, what if we created a, um, a class in between our ostrich and duck and our bird, and we called it flying bird. And we could say that, um, you know, duck extends to flying bird and flying bird has the fly method. Um, and we could say that ostrich extends bird, which doesn't have the flying method. Now um, we can add all of our flying birds to this, um, to extend this flying bird class, which extends the bird class. And um, we could use the um, bird class just uh, directly for our non-flying birds and we're not violating LSP. Okay, so in both of these examples, um, what we did was very simple, a bit contrived, and it worked um, to show us kind of how to, how to choose um, how to design classes for inheritance. And so what we did in, in these examples uh, was very simple and a little bit contrived. It showed us how to use inheritance when designing classes. Um, but of course these things can be extended further, so let's take it one step closer to a real system. All right, so most of us at some point in our careers have implemented some sort of uh, payment integrations, right? Let's imagine that we're um, building a banking withdrawal system, okay? So this is gonna be a class that's used to withdraw funds from a given account. Now the subclasses that we're going to use are going to be the accounts. And we're gonna see if we can design a system that accounts for some different um, uh, scenarios that we might run into with bank accounts. So with the first one, um, we'll imagine a simple checking account and that checking account um, is is going to be you're going to be able to withdraw money from it so no problem it can use this banking withdraw class that has a withdraw method right now let's imagine that um, we have another type of account and it's a savings account okay fine checking and savings we're a bank it's all makes sense so far right all right so because we have those two accounts and they're connecting directly to our withdraw service, we say, hey, you know what? Let's put an account class in between so that um, the different types of account can, um, can extend the account class. And that way um, we can use LSP and we can add lots of different accounts and all the, um, the uh, withdrawal service needs to know is that the, um, that the account, uh, will have certain inputs and outputs and that um, we will be able to withdraw from it. And this is basically the open closed principle, right? We, wanted, we want to close modification in our banking withdraw system. So we put that interface of the account there to, um, to allow us to have different accounts without um, the banking withdraw system being open for modification. That's just the OCP or the O and solid that we talked about last time. All right, so now we're gonna throw in a little twist. 
um, what happens if now our savings account is a um, fixed term uh, investment account, savings account, right? So the bank says, hey, you can put your money in here and we're going to give you a high interest rate, but you can't take it out for two months, something like that, or a year, like a typical CD or something. Um, maybe there's a way to withdraw it, but you can't just withdraw it with the normal banking withdraw method. Maybe you have to go in person and sign something and it's a different method, right? Um, okay, so our savings account um, now does not always have the ability to do a withdraw. And so we go up to, it goes up to our account um, class and that is expecting to work with any of those sub subtypes that should be able to be substituted in there, we go to withdraw and the whole application fails. Okay, so, so what happened there? Same thing as with the ducks and the birds and with the squares and the rectangles. We violated LSP um, because we have now a subtype that doesn't fit. Um, we ha now have a subtype that can't be substituted for the base type. So, um, in the design of this system, we need to go a little further to conserve the value we got from using the OCP by closing uh, changes on that banking withdrawal system. And in order to do that, um, we can't just simply have all of our accounts, account types attached to account and then to withdraw. We need to create a more complex architecture. And in this case, one way you could do that would be to kind of hoist a, that account interface up and have a withdrawable account um, subtype that could include your different types of checking accounts that can all do immediate withdrawals, maybe a standard savings account that can do an immediate withdrawal. And um, your bank withdrawal class can use the um, withdrawable account but then also from account, you can have non-withdrawable accounts. And those could include things like your fixed term savings account, um, which will no longer be have direct access to banking withdrawal system. And so by designing the system in that way, you were able to use um, the Liskov substitution principle or LSP to get the benefits of um, protecting your withdrawal system from modification while being able to use inheritance in a clever way to simplify your code and keep things nicely changeable so that you can add new types of withdrawable accounts very easily and you can add non-withdrawable accounts very easily without having to worry about adding complex logic to your banking withdrawal class or breaking your whole system and preventing people from getting their money altogether. Um, so as you um, go deeper into software architecture, you're going to see interfaces in lots and lots of places, not just in classes. One common example you see all the time as a programmer is an API spec. It's going to tell you exactly what those inputs and return types will be um, for a selection of API endpoints. And if you want that API to be used by many clients, um, they need to follow that spec or you can run into similar problems where um, you have a system that's built on an API, it gets swapped out by a different, um, a different API connector, and um, that connector here is just like the subclass or the subtype that uh, Barbara told us about, and suddenly uh, the whole system that was substituted in breaks because it didn't um, adhere to the LSP as it works with this API interface. All right, so I hope that was understandable. I know this was a little bit more complex, but I think hopefully going through with um, squares and rectangles and ducks and birds and banking and APIs made this complex idea a little more simple. It's really just an extension of the open closed principle, which where we're just talking about kind of connections between single modules to this idea of subtypes or subclasses. Um, so if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments and I'll try to elucidate everything for you. Hopefully you understand clearly and you're ready to move on to the I in solid in our next video. So I'll see you next time. Video production by Brian Harris. Music by Young Logos and Otis McDonald. Sponsored by Arcanium.